Hi, Hi Dave. Dave. Can everyone hear us? Yeah. Any... <laughs> we had technical problems again. It wasn't my son with magical powers <laughs> switching it off. So, <laughs> so I was just saying that. Um, so I've been a clinical hypnotherapist for nearly 15 years. As old as my son, he just sort of come in because he was the reason why I'm a hypnotherapist and a hypnotherapist. And I've had two books published, which you um, you might not recognise this this because it has a new cover. But Mindful Hypnobirthing was my first book. That's a new revised edition. And that's for um, the first year. So that's brilliant for um, just after you've had the baby and a good one to start reading in the last few weeks of pregnancy. Um, and I really love teaching these mindset tools because they are so, so great. And they're so important at times like this. And I'm really glad to be here because um, I wanted to really talk to you about how hypnobirthing isn't always what people think it is, and um, it's much more than than that. And it's a brilliant tool for um, really getting into a positive mindset for birth. And a hypnobirthing course will teach you why that is, and it's a lot to do how your mind is connected with what's happening in your body. Um, People often ask me, is hypnobirthing still relevant in situations like this? Um, partly because it's so associated with um, home birth, with normal birth, natural birth, however you want to call it. Um, and it's actually absolutely more relevant in times like this because when we're anxious and we're worried and we're afraid, um, we go into what's known as fight or flight, a survival response. And that can make it harder for us to make decisions. It can make it harder for muscles in our body to work effectively during birth. Um, and so the tools that hypnobirthing teaches you are brilliant. They reduce your anxiety, um, they reduce stress, and they really help you to get into the best possible um, frame of mind and best possible state physically to birth your baby. Um, so if you're doing a hypnobirthing class, it will teach you why that is. And I think the most important thing is to remember that at the end of the day, we're animals, um, we're mammals. And if we feel frightened or scared at all, our bodies aren't going to um, help us give birth somewhere where we feel threatened. And so what hypnobirthing does is it helps you feel safe and secure wherever you're birthing. Um, and never has that been more important than right now. Um, so um, any questions about that at all? Just feed me questions. I'm happy to ask as many questions as, come, as, as you want to send me. Um, also, people assume that hypnobirthing is just about pain relief, and a lot of the studies have focused on whether people have had epidurals or not. And actually, um, I really want to get away from that thinking because hypnobirthing is about having a really positive experience. And it doesn't matter whether you've had an epidural or whether you've had a cesarean or um, whether you've had a home birth or a hospital birth. What really matters is that you feel strong and powerful, you felt informed, respected, and that you feel that you have had a positive experience because that is a really good entrance into motherhood. Um, starting off from that position where you feel fantastic. Um, it's, it puts you in really sure footing in those early days. And that's what really swung me when I did it, is when I had Rory, I, my, my birth was quite high risk with him. And I just had an amazing experience and I felt so good in the days after birth that I was able to care for him better than I had for my first and I was in a much better state mentally which was really important um, another question I get asked a lot is isn't it all a bit woohoo and if I'm really honest with everyone watching um, I would never have gone to a hypnotherapist before I had my son I just happened to be watching a TV show that was talking about hypnobirthing and this was in 2004 so going back a bit now, and and I thought, well, I'll have a, you know, I'll have a go. I've got nothing to lose. 
So I bought some MP3s and I listened to them every night. And oh my gosh, I slept so well during my pregnancy. Um, I felt great. And my husband, I didn't notice that I was calmer and more relaxed, but people would say to me, oh, you seem really chilled out about this. You seem really relaxed. And and I realized slowly that I had changed in my mindset. Um, and, and so it was so subtle and it just felt great. Um, it was just, you know, a really easy therapy to do. And... I was just so blown away by it. I went on to train as a hypnotherapist almost immediately after Rory was born. And the breadth of how it can be applied is so much more than just the hypnobirthing we read about. Um, It's fantastic. And you're always in control. No one can make anything and make you do anything you don't want to do. Um, And I think that's the biggest message is you are in control of the shifts and changes in your mindset analysis is for showing you how you can do that um so not woohoo at all it's well evidenced in science and um, we read um things around hypnosis but actually things like irritable bowel syndrome um tinnitus um even helping um reading um there are so many studies that small studies that have been done on hip- hypnosis um that are really eye-opening um so if you want to do hypnobirthing and this thing I get told a lot, um, my partner doesn't want to do it, but I really want to do it. And this stops a lot of people doing hypnobirthing. But actually the people that I, I think are the biggest converts when they do a course or they come on a class are the partners because it makes sense. Um, the way I teach it is from a more a psychological framework and the tools that I teach, partners end up taking into work, um, using on the commute to go to sleep on the train, and suddenly they get it, and it really makes sense. So um, I think they're really practical life skills, and that's a really good way to sell it to your partner, um, or to get them to read the chapter in my book that is just for partners, which is only a few pages. So it's so a good introduction. Has just asked, is it beneficial for the dad or birthing partner as well as just the mum? Oh, gosh, yes, it's so beneficial. People often forget that the birth partner, um, that your birth partner, may also be feeling very anxious and stress. And in those situations, stress is, is is contagious we all know that and so actually when your partner does the course and they understand what's happening up here and how that changes on in your body it's like a light bulb switches on and it it reduces their fear as well um and there is evidence to show that when you know that your partner feels confident in their ability to support you in the way you want to be supported that it reduces your and reduce builds your confidence so it's like this loop of positivity and it also teaches a partner how to manage their fears during the birth if they come up and how to be a compassionate birth partner um how to use the tools how to support you with the tools um i absolutely fits partner um that is the most powerful session in a class every single practitioner says they love that session because it's just something for partners and there isn't really much antenatal prep for partners no one really recognizes their role or what um, the impact of the birth on them and all give them tools to manage that so yeah i would absolutely say that that's so valuable for a partner yeah yeah, see, I didn't even know that because when I was doing my hypnobirthing before giving birth, I didn't even think to include Joe in it. So na- now you say it, you're like, oh, yeah, it would have been made more sense to include him. But you just don't think about that, do you? So Yeah, I think it's really important at times like transition as well, where some women just go through transition and don't really notice it. And that's a time when... Um, women often say, I can't do this anymore. I need the epidural now. They want to start packing their bags and want to leave the room, which is classic fight or flight coming in because there's a natural surge of adrenaline at that point um, before. Bait, um, and it's usually all it is, is the mammalian part of your body checking the environment to make sure that it is safe to birth the baby because it's, it's, it, you've only got another 
and maybe a couple of hours before your baby will be born. Your body's also changing in terms of how it's working physiologically. So transition is this kind of 40, about 45 minutes switch in your body and it can, you can become more alert. And if you haven't prepared for that, it can be like, what's going on, what's going on? And the partner might say, oh, she was she was really um, like in her zone 10 minutes ago. Now she's asking for an epidural, what do I do? And they may try to jump in and fix it and say, and become a bit flustered. But actually, if you teach them about it and you give them tools and they recognize what it is and why it's happening, so it's not so frightening and they think yeah I know what this is I know what we need to do now and so it just makes it easier I think uh, no. well, there's yeah there's another question as well um Kelly yeah. said she used hypnobirthing very successfully with her first pregnancy with this one she needs a c-section so can she use hypnobirthing with a c-section or is it just for natural labor no absolutely I have a whole chapter in my revised book in the one with the blue cover in this one there is a whole chapter on how to use it for a cesarean birth um and i do have an mp3 on my website on how to um it's actually birth preparation tracks um for having a cesarean birth um in fact if anyone's on instagram um i was a doula for someone a couple of months ago who had um, a cesarean using hypnobirthing and she had such an amazing experience so you can do lots of connecting visualizations with your baby you can use the count you can use some of the hypnosis tracks when you're having a spinal block or when you're going when you're actually giving birth to your baby you can um, instead of distracting yourself with something else you can actually connect with the movement it's absolutely painless um, it just feels like a bit of pressure and massage on your abdomen and um, you can you can connect with that and just connect with your baby being born in that moment as well using mindfulness and hypnosis so yeah a hundred percent it's it's brilliant for things like that yeah brilliant. thank you that's all the live questions for now so. okay so um, how can you do a class at the moment because you can't go to a class um, there are loads of people doing remote classes at the moment. I've got um, practitioners. All The beauty of being online is you can pick any practitioner you want. Whether, um, I have practitioners who are midwives, hypnotherapists, mums who've used it themselves, psychologists. So you can pick someone who you appeal to you and you can do a remote class online. So you have loads of options um, to do classes at the moment. Um, I'm, a lot of my practitioners are doing wired clinics as well. So people are reading the book and then doing a one hour session just to go over bits in the book or go over some of the techniques, which is quite helpful and a lot, lot cheaper as well. We do actually have a class coming up um, starting next Saturday. There's a four week course. So every Saturday, I think it's at half 12, but don't quote me on that. I will confirm that um, later. Um, but yeah, so for the next four Saturdays from next week, there is an online class which is free in this group as well. So that's another option if you have that long to wait. Okay. Um, why does reducing stress matter in pregnancy? So a lot of what hypnobirthing does is it's not so much about just the birth. It, I mean, it's amazing for the birth. But actually, people forget that the tools that you're learning are having huge benefit during pregnancy as well. This goes for people who are higher risk or having a cesarean who think, oh, there's no point in me doing it. That absolutely is because every time you do your relaxation, your hypnotic relaxation tracks, every time you practice your techniques, you're activating your soothing system in your body. And when you do that, your baby feels it. They feel when you relax and it really benefits your baby, um, especially at times like this when we're on high alert all the time. It's especially important to take time out to switch off um, that high alert system and to switch on the soothing system in your body. Really benefits the baby um, and you. Um, what does it feel like? Um, try a track and find out. Um, you can download the ones for the book um, for free 
on on the Penguin website just to have a listen. Um, but it just feels like if you've ever done a yoga nidra or done a relaxation track on audio, it just feels like that. The only difference is the language. Um, hypnotic language is um, very subtle and it's full of suggestion. So it's lots of suggestion about having um, a very positive birth, trusting your body, trusting your instincts, um, feeling more and more confident each and every day, and the more confident you feel. So it's very, the language is very, very specific, and that's really hypnosis is. It's a, it's a therapy of language. Um, and so it feels very relaxing. And when you're doing the techniques, it feels really empowering as well because you are, you, you can feel that what you are doing is making a difference to your well-being. And that's that's a really powerful thing to to know. Um, so no, and it just feels lovely. I have people who come to my clinic um, who come just to do a hypnotic relaxation. Um, and a de-stress because they m- might not like hand massage and things like that and they just feel so chilled afterwards so it just feels lovely um is there any apps or anything you can recommend well my tracks are free so um so you can listen you can download my tracks app wise i would go to if a good app that is free it's not necessarily just hypnosis but there are lots of different tracks um is insight timer so um so i would have a look at insight timer um it is free to download and there are free tracks on there but they're not necessarily all hypno- hypnotic ones so i don't know many hip- there are hypnobirthing apps but the hypnobirth some of the hypnobirthing apps i know aren't actually written by hypnotherapists does that makes sense so I can't think of one that is written. Tracy Donegan, she's an Irish. She's an Irish midwife who lives in the states. She's a hypnotherapist, and she has an app. So that's the only one I can think of, and that's specifically hypnobirth. So, um, if you can give me the links to yours, I'll pop them in the comments after this video, so then people can go. And uh, it's also been asked where you can purchase your books from. Amazon. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but if you go to Amazon, I would recommend getting this one. And what you have to do, because there are two versions out at the moment, the publishers um, updated this, um, but there's still the old cover selling, um, is put in Mindful Hypnobirthing Revised Edition in, and then this one should come up. So, um, yeah, so Amazon, any major bookseller online, you can get the book. Um and losing control that's an in- i wanted to pop that in because a lot of people think oh no i'm losing control when i'm doing hypnosis and all the darren brown things um you know you see a lot of all the darren brown stuff on telly and darren brown is an illusionist as well so he, he uses very clever tricks integrated with some hypnotic um techniques but People always, I can't make any, anyone do anything they don't want to do, nor can Darren Brown. He's very clever at making it look as though he can, but actually he can't. And in a class, straight why. Um, but you will only go as deeply into hypnosis as you feel comfortable. When you are in um, hypnosis, you will know straight away that at any moment you can come out of it if you want. Um, and things like for example stopping smoking i do loads of but if someone comes in and says right i really want to stop smoking and i say to them why do you want to stop smoking and they say because my wife's always telling me that she'll leave me if i don't stop smoking if um he actually secretly wants to leave his wife i'm not going to be able to make him give up smoking because the smoking becomes a vehicle to him leaving his wife (laughs) so it's really subtle in how it works um so i can't make anyone do anything they don't want to do or they have gain from from doing um so it's um it's a really interesting therapy in that way and completely different to all the myths out there so you are always in control so yeah any other questions about it about how it feels um you know kyla she's asked um 
can you do it with spiritual things such as crystals, essential oil and scents, etc.? Yeah, I mean, I um, I tend to keep my more sciency in terms of the book and everything, but I am um, a Reiki. I, I did do my Reiki a few years ago, and if people want that, I will integrate that into a session. And I have a friend who is a master Reiki practitioner, for example, and she's trained in crystal therapies and, and everything. And she, um, I've seen her use Reiki on pregnant women and oh my gosh the babies start moving responding and so yeah I think definitely you what you need to do is find what works for you if something relaxes you and baby responds to it in a positive so your baby will move a lot when you're doing hypnosis when you're doing therapies like that because you're relaxing and the baby's responding to it as well so definitely you can use all of those things alongside it um, and you know, bringing things like rose quartz into a session um, when you're practicing it at home, listening to your MP3, can be really uh, can be a really great anchor as well, because you can take that into the birth room with you, and you associate it with feeling positive and feeling relaxed as well. So definitely bring those things in with it. Um, they work really well together. Yes. The only live questions um, if anyone does have any more please pop them in the comments so you don't miss out on asking what you want to ask okay I'll, I'll happily come into the group and answer any questions if anyone watches this afterwards as well thank you uh, I appreciate that yeah. yeah so I know that there'll be lots of chocolate opening going on at the moment yeah. so I feel <laughs> overexcited actually they will be completely lively at this time in the morning oh definitely all the mouthful okay. chocolate so, for breakfast <laughs> sounds great I don't know I know. But yeah, so, a lot of people might watch it after. Um, so if there is any other questions, um, one has just come in, or two just come in. There's a bit okay. of a lag on. Um, uh, if during birth it becomes clear that you're going to need emergency intervention, do you carry on trying to hypnotize? Definitely. I think in those situations, what tends to happen is people think, oh, there's no point in using my hypnobirthing anymore. If they've done my course, they'll know that there is because in these moments when things go off track, it can be quite frightening because it's gone off plan, it's uncertain, we don't know what's going on. And so what happens in our brain at that point is it triggers a fight or flight response because our intention is to protect us and our baby. So if we feel threatened, it can increase adrenaline, which changes your breathing. Um, and it also creates things like brain fog, so if you've ever had to get up, if you don't like giving presentations and you get up and give a presentation, you're familiar with that. I can't remember what I was going to say and your mind goes blank. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And so during a birth, if you're in a situation where things have suddenly got quite urgent, um, that's the last thing you want to be happening. You want to be in a really, you want to be grounded. You want to be in a clear state of mind so that you're making, you're asking the right questions. You're making sure that that you're getting the things that you need. So for example, in that situation, I would say if everything else is taken away that I wanted, I definitely would want some skin to skin, definitely, um, as soon as possible. And if I'm in a, a foggy head state, I'm not maybe not gonna remember to ask for that. Where I'm in clear head state, I'll remember to ask for those things that are really important to me, even in an emergency situation. Um, and the other thing as well, if you're using these techniques in that, this situation, it benefits the baby well. We've, I've had so much anecdotal feedback from midwives over the years saying that when the mum is calmer and using her techniques in those types of situations, she's increasing the flow of oxygen as well to the baby. So um, the babies really benefit from that. So absolutely, in those situations, um, this is where working with your partner is really helpful because with both of you together, your partner can say, right, come on, remember what we learned, just take a nice deep breath, that's brilliant, just focus on your breath, and the, the calmer you are, the more relaxed you are, the better this is going to be. Uh, when is anything a good experience if we're in a kind of discombobulated state? When we're calmer and more focused, even a stressful situation feels better so yes definitely quite long-winded but i really feel passionately about that <laughs> yeah. yeah it makes a lot of sense <laughs> definitely um, 
um, I have PTSD following my previous traumatic birth 11 years ago. Are there any concerns around using hypnotherapy alongside trauma? Mm, no, I'd be cautious about the mindfulness. If you haven't had any treatment for the PTSD, that's just, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that happened to you. Um, but it's wonderful that you're exploring this this time round. And I do work with many women who've had um, a traumatic experience for their first and then come to hypnobirthing for their second. Um, so I would definitely, if there are specific, this is where it can be quite helpful to work with someone directly um, because you may have specific fears and anxieties um, relating to the previous birth. Um, very often fear of any anxiety or fear of childbirth isn't, I always say to people, there's no such thing as fear of childbirth, which I would never say unless I was doing a talk, because people would say, of course there is. But really, there's, if you, the trick to it is looking at why you're frightened. As, and you, what you do in a therapy like hypnosis is you do what's called chunking down. So from, a, from where fear is, you then say, well, what is it? Why do you have a fear around it? And then I would listen and then ask, well, why do you have a specific fear about X? And then you drill down until you find out what the actual fear is and you work with that directly. Um, and it, in, it's very often quite different for many women. And if you've had a previous trauma, this can be a very useful step-by-step -step approach um in preparing for the next birth but yes definitely um so many women i've worked with have gone from having a traumatic birth the first time to having a completely different and positive experience the second time around um so you know if you can even get an hour session with a hypnotherapist or someone who specializes in this um it might really help as well so yeah is that helpful Another question come in. Do you see a lesser need for medical pain relief in women you have coached who have hypnobirthed? De I definitely see less. Absolutely. Um, I, I always say to women, I'm not anti pain relief at all. I think um, if you use mindset tools, you're less likely to to use pain relief. Um, it's you know, people often say, oh, well, if you're a hypnobirthing practitioner, it's all about having a pain-free birth. And it's not, that's not how I work at all. So I definitely would say the majority of women I've worked with haven't chosen to have pain relief. And I'm a doula as well. Um, quite a few women use gas and air. Um, some women have had epidurals. Um, but what's really important is that every single one of them has made an informed choice about it. And I think that's really important. Um, and there is, you know, there's a lot of talk of saying I failed at hypnobirthing because I had an epidural. I absolutely do not buy into that at all. I think if you've made an informed choice to have an epidural um, and it's something that you've, you know, you've been in a good headspace, you've made that decision um, and you've had a positive experience because of that, that's that's what it's all about having a positive experience as much as someone who has come out of their birth and said it was fantastic i didn't use any pain relief and they're really proud of that i think all of those birth experiences are valid all of them um and it, i think i definitely see less use of pain relief and i always say to women who i work with um go as long as you can really as long as you can take it each breath at a time and you'd be surprised with the right support how much you can do actually one breath at a time and Gloria LeMay who's a very famous midwife in America um, once said and um, she actually once said if a woman can sit still giving an um, having an epidural she can give birth with the right support without one and I think that's a very interesting um, way of looking at it as well and that is about the one breath at a time um, and having really good support. But having said that, if that's your choice and it's an informed choice and, you know, hypnobirthing has got you into the right headspace to make that choice, then that's okay. So, you know, it's your birth and it's all about having a positive experience. 
I have to say for me, that helped me. I kept thinking, right, after one more breath, I'll have the gas and air. Then it was like, no, the next one, the next one, the next one. And it wasn't until I was actually pushing that I actually was like, no, I need the gas and air, and it all went out the window. But up until then, it did prevent me from taking that pain relief. And not at the time, but afterwards, I was like, oh, I'm quite proud that I got through it with just hitting the birthing and not actually needing the pain relief or because I thought I'd be shouting for it but no it's that the breathing really helped and to be honest when I first looked at hypnobirth and I was only about 38 weeks so I thought oh I'm too late to even attempt it but even just those few weeks really helped so even if you are later on in pregnancy I think it can definitely benefit you Death. oh absolutely um I mean I work with people who are 40 weeks pregnant so really at the last minute and um, we, um, if anyone's read, has anyone read the Positive Birth book? Just put a thumbs up if you have, or or, or something, by Millie Hill. Um, it's a really great book to read. Um, and Millie Hill and I have put together an online pack called um, Birthing, um, Having a Positive Birth During COVID-19. And it starts at £12.50. It's an online digital pack. <laughs> And it's got some of these techniques in here, in there that are specific for this time. So um, really, really helpful. And we had someone who bought it on the Thursday and she'd had her baby, she'd listened to the tracks, done it on the Friday and um, on the Thursday and she had her baby on the Friday. And she said it was incredibly helpful. So just in that 24 hours, she actually sent a testimonial by the end of Friday. So literally within 24 hours of the pack being launched, we had our first testimonial in. So if you are 40 weeks and that, you can definitely, definitely still make use of these tools. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, somebody's asked, are the MP3s to train you for the birth only or can you use them for everyday relaxation? The MP3 is for, um, generally people listen to them once a day. The one with the book is a, a birth one. I do have non-birth ones on my website, but you have to buy those, they're separate. Um, and there are affirmation tracks that are free with the book as well. But the general ones are purchasable downloads. Um, so there's a partner pack as well. There are loads of other tracks and things that are on, on there. Um, if someone's done a class, they get access to more. Um, but the, and the ones in the COVID-19 pack are more specific to giving birth at times like this. So they're more about build, getting connected with your inner resources, building resilience, that sort of thing. So. And like I say, I'll pop the links in here when the video ends, just so you've got access to that. Um, that's all the live questions. People are just okay. saying thank you. So. Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you everyone for coming on board and joining and asking questions. Um, I just, hypnobirthing is so much more, I think, than people think it is. Um, and um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to see people applying it more at times like this and seeing how much of a difference it can make. Um, and of course, you can go and use them afterwards. So when you're a new mum, this book is packed techniques and visualizations and all sorts of things from the moment your baby is born about connection feeding things like that and there are loads of tracks free to download with that as well so i'll give you all the links for that so Brilliant. okay um, are you still happy to do the short relaxation to finish yeah. people want me to do a short relaxation is that what people want do they want to see a little demo the comments are a little behind. So. Yeah, I'll wait while I pick one. <laughs> I have these um little cards. I'm just here. What I'm doing is I'm they're all just little cards with things written on them. So I'm just picking out what I think would be really nice right now. Um, let's have a look. I'll tell you what. I would do the very simple three, two, one. Relax, relax, relax. It's a tool for the things that I teach. So, yeah, everyone's saying yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't say? So, so, I'm doing these on Instagram. Um, 
during lockdown. So if you want to do more of them after today, go and follow me on Instagram. So it's my camera. Oh, there. Move it oh. over a little bit. Other way. Other way. <laughs> oh. Hang on. <laughs> yep. Okay. Can everyone see that? Yeah. So this is a calm breath one. So it's just a figure of eight. So if you imagine that the top of the figure eight, of, the, of eight is the um, top of your torso and the bottom half is your belly. So um, you can see if you follow it around, it says breathe in, three, two, one, breathe out, relax, relax, relax. So all I'm gonna do is talk you through it, but the visual is breathing in, three, two, one, Breathing out, relax, relax, relax. So you just follow that figure of eight around your body. Um, so close your eyes where you are. Take a nice breath in. You want to keep breathing, that's fine. So just breathe normally for a few moments. Notice your breath. That's what I'm asking you to do is notice your breath. And then I want you to put one hand on that area here, on your thoracic area. You can't your belly because it's sitting down. Put your other hand on your belly here. And I just want you to just breathe normally and just turn your attention to your hands and notice which hand is moving more than the top one or it might be the bottom one. Now, if you're breathing from up here, I just want you to see if you can take a deeper breath so that this hand is the one that's moving more. So just take a moment to do that. A bit like blowing a balloon up in your already balloon-like belly. So, and just take three breaths in your own time. That's perfect, that's right doing really well so with your next breath in just relax your hands down just shake them out that's right roll your shoulders maybe and just rest them and take a nice deep breath in as you do i'm going to count three two one and then as you breathe out relax 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 breathing in Three, two, one. Breathing out. Relax, relax, relax. That's great. And all I'm going to do now is just count. And I want you to follow your in breath with three, two, one, and your out breath with relax, relax, relax. Three, two, one. Relax, relax, relax. And then just, I want you to do it in your head. That's it, that's right. The more you do this, the easier it will get. And the easier it gets, the more you will notice how you can change and shift your breath to take those nice deep breaths in to find the rhythm of your body. And as you do that, your confidence and your ability in using the techniques will grow stronger and stronger each and every day. And every time that you breathe in, three, two, one, and breathe out, relax, relax, relax. Your body will soften your muscles will relax. You may even notice right now that your shoulders and your hands are feeling heavier or perhaps lighter. Everyone is different in how they experience this simple hypnotic relaxation. So once more, breathing in, three, two, one. Breathing out, relax, relax, relax. That's perfect. Any noises or sounds you hear in the room, outside the room, even outside the home, 
those sounds are of no consequence to you, they actually make you feel more relaxed, knowing that you are comfortable in your bubble of calm. Three, two, one. Relax, relax, relax. That's perfect. Now just once more, notice your shoulders, your hands are relaxed. Your baby may have been moving around a bit. And when you're ready, just taking a nice deep, but noticing your soles of your feet on the ground if you are sitting in a chair or wherever you are lying, just notice lying, coming back, back to your wriggling your fingers, wriggling your toes. And as I count out, up, one, two, three, you'll be coming more and more aware. Four, noticing how my voice is getting louder, following my voice, and five, coming back into the room, feeling fully awake and aware, but feeling nicely relaxed and comfortable. So there you go. That's a very simple way to embed a breathing technique for birth. How did people find that? Everyone's gone quiet, so I think they were doing it. <laughs> I said everyone to <laughs> Are we still in the room? <laughs> oh dear. That's, um, the trick is with some of that is it's all about repetition. So all you're doing is you every time that you repeat, three, two, one, relax, relax, relax. You're making that connection with feeling relaxed with that method of counting and breathing. Um, and also the type of counting that is, it slightly lengthens your out breath, which triggers a soothing system in your body. So it's a really great one to do if you're, especially when we're locked in like this, and we around after children or you're feeling a bit stressed, it's a very quick and easy one to do. So to practice it, you just find somewhere quiet, put some relaxing music on in the background, um, maybe have a nice scent nearby, an anchor oil or something, um, and just practice it five minutes a day. Really simple. And when you go into the birth, every time Tiny words, three, two, one, relax, relax, relax. Your body will relax, your muscles and your uterus will, will relax, and it just make everything a lot easier and a lot calmer very quickly. Everybody's saying that they feel really sleepy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Loads of thank yous, yeah. Somebody said that they're already reading your book, Kathy's already reading it. Um, Kirsty, quite relaxing considering the three year old was poking me in the face of his foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do it with a child as well. So in my sec in my second book, I do one where you, if you've got another child, you can practice um, doing the circle of eight on their forehead. And actually, if you do that to yourself as well, it's really soothing. So you go three, two, one, relax, relax, relax. So you can do your breathing while soothing your child at the same time. So there you go. Do you think it's a good idea for your birth? <laughs> partner to do this to you yeah. as well yeah. exactly and that's the beauty of these techniques you can adapt them all and that was that's really important to me that what I teach isn't prescriptive um, they can be adapted and changed for you and that's what makes hypnosis the most powerful is when you make it your own and sometimes people say to me oh um, I found I didn't, I wanted to be told what to do. And, and I think, well, actually that it works better when you choose how to use the techniques in your own way. It's really going to help people during this scary time. It's the one time that you want to feel relaxed when you can't control it. So, and birth is scary enough. So this will really help you guys, I think. So, you're always in control of how you feel mm. that's a really important thing to remember and i remember nelson mandela said when he was in jail he said he was always free because he had the freedom to think mm. and i always think that's that's yeah. something to take away with you is your thoughts are free and you you, you know you can control how you feel whatever the situation that is so. really true yeah remember that i need to remember that <laughs> yeah but okay, so I'll put links in. I'll, I'll give the link to Jade for the books, but also my Instagram because I'm much more active on Instagram than I am 
on here. I do have a private Facebook group as well, um, which is for hypnobirthing. So if people want to join that, they're welcome. Um, and um, and I'll put the link in for the positive birth during COVID nineteen pack that Millie and I have written. So yeah, brilliant. I'll put yeah. that all in shortly. So just check the bottom of the comments in ten minutes okay. or so, and I'll get that in for you. Thank you so much for your time, Sophie. Thanks for everyone. For joining. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Easter. Bye, guys. Bye.